Hey, 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 everybody. Happy Wednesday. Hump day. We are halfway through the week and I am excited, although I still pick up overtime on Saturday. So it's not like I'm, I'm fully committed to uh, just being off on my uh, my um, Saturday and Sunday days off. But however, I'm ex so excited because I am alive and well. God has given me another chance to be amongst the living and another chance to share my love with you. So good morning. I am cracking up on the inside because I remember when I was younger, I used to watch Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And I would watch it when I go to my babysitter. She would have Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood on Channel 13. It'll be Sesame Street, Electric Company, and then that would come on. And this gentleman was just so jubilant. And I, I've been stuck on this word jubilant um, saying that this whole week. I don't know what it is with this word jubilant, but that was, this is how I'm, I'm feeling. This is how I'm describing me and how I'm feeling this morning. And so this man will come in um, and he would change his shoes and he's singing, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day in the neighbor. Won't you be mine? Won't you be mine? And he's so chipper. He's just a bending dad. Got on his cardigan, his plaid shirt, his tie, well-dressed, nice, nicely put and well-groomed. And he's changing from his Oxford shoes, putting on his um, skippies and he's tying them up and he's just happy. His spirit is just so happy. He had a zest for life. And then his show, it was geared upon helping others. He had the puppets and they would, they would come to him and he would teach them different things. And as he's teaching them, he was teaching me. This is how our spirit should be in the morning. So this is why I am practicing smiling more, being jubilant more, having more zest of life, because this is what God wants us to do. And as I always say at the end of my encouraging message for the day, this is the day that God has made. So when we wake up, we should be rejoicing in it. Because remember, he holds our life, your heart, that heartbeat. The blood that flows through your vein, he holds it in his hand. So he, at any time, he snap his fingers, close the palm of his hand, and you'll be gone. You'll be then transitioned off. He don't care how it happens. When it's time for us to go, we're going to go. So when we do wake up to see in another day, we have got to rejoice and be happy about it, y'all. So I'm excited. It is Wednesday. And yesterday, I spoke to you all about um, noticing things with your kids, being there for your kids, check doing self-checks on the kids and making sure that they're okay. Having that family time for the kids because we're so overwhelmed with doing things with this um, in life and throughout our day, juggling this and juggling that, that we don't make time for the kids. So today I want to encourage you to do self-care for you. Yes, we are the uttermost important Okay, we are the lifeline. I don't know if that show soul food. We is always somebody in the family that holds everything together, that keeps everything going. And in that move, that show, that series, Soul Food, it was the grandmother. And when she passed away, everything started going haywire. Everybody's problems started surfacing. The problems was already there, but it was just different obstacles being thrown in the way. And because grandma always hold everything together. Now she's gone. Everybody didn't know how to function. So that's how, what I was talking about with yesterday as well. We can't, the kids can't function if we are always doing everything for them. They, they, we show them this perfect picture of what life is for us and what we make things seem, but they don't see the struggles because we don't allow them to see the struggles. But in this we have to make time for ourselves. What about you? You are important. You are the one that holds everything together. Whether you are the wife or the husband or whether you're a single parent, you're holding everything together. So you matter, right? But we go through our day with all these plans. I know I do. I'm very strategic you know, and I'm a stickler for time. So I, everything is time for me. And if I fall off that schedule, I'm learning to tell myself it's okay, Judith. It's all right. Calm your nerve. But because of my mild OCD behavior, 
My life is just how I have to organize my, my desk, organize my kitchen. My life has to be organized as well. My schedule, my daily schedule is organized. If you see my plan and you be like, this girl is highlights here, mapped out with the time here of what I got to do and the time is next to it. Everything is strategic, strategically mapped out for me, lined up for my day. Some people is not like that. They're just all over the place. They're just all over the place doing this, doing that, not completing this, starting that. But um, we don't stop in the midst of that all to take time for ourselves, right? And we don't think how important, we don't realize, I should say, how important it is to have yourself well. That's why I always spoke before to do wellness checks. Do a self-check on yourself. Look in the mirror and say, self, what do I need today? Self, why am I feeling this way today? Self, what can I do to make you better? You got to speak to yourself. You already know how you're feeling inside. You already know what, your, what the lack is. So now you have to put it into place of doing something for yourself to uplift your spirit, doing something for yourself to make sure that your energy level is up, that you are withstanding your health, your inner being is where you should be starting because your health is important. If you are not taking care of yourself, putting things that is toxic and infectious into your body, you're not going to be around long enough to even try to run no show. Your kids, your husband, your friends, family, siblings, whoever is not going to see you very long because of what you're eating on a daily basis. And I get it. I've worked for law enforcement for 15 years and we started out with only a 30 minute lunch break. Okay. 30 minutes. I don't know what it is today, but in 30 minutes that damaged my stomach because I couldn't chew my food properly. I'm rushing to eat my food. I, I'm rushing at a fast pace and that is destroying the digestive system. You're putting too much stress on your inner being. This is why I have no gallbladder today. I have gallstones and it had to be removed. So it's important what we put into our mouths. We got to start there. What are you eating? Okay. Then you got to think about it. Self, am I working out to keep the muscles strong? When we have muscles all through our bodies and when we don't use them and we are not exercising and moving, and, and getting getting things going and the, the heart pumping, we lose it. It becomes weak. It's just there, not being used, just sitting there. That's how the inner part of our bodies are. And so we have to watch what we eat, make some time, 30-minute walks. If you can't get out and walk, go up and down your steps in your house. Run around the living room. I don't know how everybody's house is constructed, but you can do something. You have a backyard, you can go out and run a couple of laps around the backyard. There is always something that we can do. It is called self-care. During the pandemic, everybody started talking about self-care afterwards because we was on shutdown. Well, you guys was. I'm an essential worker, so I was out and about. But people were forced to stay in the house for this a certain amount of time. And it, it drove people crazy because you're a person that is so accustomed to moving and doing that you now here it is, you, you're at a standstill. So we in the red, and then we went from the yellow to, to moving around just a tad bit and the green. Lo and behold, when we got to the green, everybody was on a frenzy. Everybody was out accomplishing the things that they didn't get to do in a whole month. You had some relationships that I've seen on the news with celebrities come, learning themselves that they weren't compatible, so they were going their separate ways. The pandemic brought on a lot of things that was just like, uh, it was nerve-wracking for those of us that can't stay still. However, you do have some people that are stuck in the house because they're afraid to come back outside. They didn't want to return back to work. So it's, it's, it's just like it was so much. The world put so much on us at one time and it comes sporadically. You know, it's like, here's the obstacles. It feel like somebody's throwing a dart sometime at me because here you got to do this and here you got to do that. And that's my, one of my kids, my son. He's so, he's a social butterfly and always into something. 
Javel is a, is a go-getter. He's not afraid to try something. So he'll go out there and he'll sign his name down on stuff. And me being a single parent, the one that's up here that he lives with, I have to be make time now out of my work schedule, my busy schedule, to adjust the things that he has going on. Because you don't want them to feel that no one's there to support them, right? So I'm always there. Football. He has track. Mind you, you sitting in every kind of weather, every kind of temperature there is. A play. He had bands. Like every single thing, I'm there. But it came to a point in my life where I had to pump my brakes and say, hold up. Hold up, shorty. You're doing team too much. Mommy is overwhelmed. And I'm not do I can't do it. Like I'm I'm tired, you know? And I, I physically you get to that point. Because I was always running and doing this and that for him and for my daughter that I didn't take time out for myself. I remember even before I moved up to the Poconos, my, my sister, my older sister, she traveled and she still travels. That's who I travel with um, every year. We do a girl's trip. But prior to that, when I lived in Brooklyn, I would work and raise these kids. And it was just that. Work kids church. Work kids church. You know, and, and, and I did not have time for me. And then I, my sister would come back from her trips and it was her and my brother-in-law at the time, God rest his soul. They would be all over the place. Costa Rica, um, um, Cancun, DR. I mean, they were Jamaica. They were everywhere. And I'm grateful that he gotten, he had that opportunity to travel. They were on cruises, Hawaii. I mean, they were living life abundantly. And that's how God wants us to live. And my sister would come back and she was like, sis, you got to get on. You got to come. I don't care what you do. You could pay your pump pay into this trip. You know, you could pay little by little. You could pay little by little. You don't have to give it in the lump sum. Cause my thing was like, oh my God, I got to pay this bill. I got to pay that bill. How am I going to do a trip? How am I going to put this money down? Where am I going to get the money from? One day I just woke up and I was like, listen, I'm going on a trip. I was overwhelmed. I was like, I'm going on a trip. Once I got a whiff of traveling and being on somebody else's land, honey, I was like, oh, we're going to do this every year. And then I got so savvy with it. All right, I'm going to make time for the kids. We're going to do a family trip. So here it is, a mommy, self-care, me trip. And then it's the kids. But then again, we don't always have to come out of our pockets. Some of us just don't have it. You just don't want to travel. You're afraid to get on a plane. Whatever the thing your excuses are, because that's what they are, excuses, you have to make time for you. Everything starts with us. Everything. You have to do a self-check with yourself. Remember, my good friend here on the side of me, your mirror. Look in the mirror and see what it is that you need to do. You can go to a spa. You can say, I'm going out to eat by myself. You can tell them kids have several seats. It's about me. We're not, I'm not going to be there. If you're going to go, you're gone. But I'm not going to be there this time because I have to do me. People want you to always come and attend things. And it's good to be loved. It's good that people want you around them, that they appreciate you. They like your spirit and they want you there. But you can't dance to every beat. You can't dance to every, move to every song. So it's okay to say, no, I am going to rest today. Why? Because you know you. You know your breaking point. You know your body. Before God shuts you down, you better know that you better shut yourself down. Go and get your nails done. Go get your feet done. Even for men. Men is getting a manicure, um, manicures and pedis today. Men can go to a spa and get a nice massage. Massages are the thing, and it, it wakes up the tissues and the cells in your body. A massage does a million and one things for the body, for the, 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 the nervous system, the muscular system in our body, the reproductive system. A massage is essential. Some people just go to the chiropractor just to get an alignment of the spine and the neck and an adjustment. You're being reset in many different ways. More ways than one. Not only you're resetting yourself mentally, spiritually, verbally, but physically. So you have to make time for you. Have to, have to, have to make time for you. Okay? It's essential and it's important. You matter. 
Your life matters. And if you don't take that into account today, then something's wrong with you and you're going to pass out running around trying to keep up with everybody else. You do not have to wait for a holiday to celebrate you. You work, you have an income coming in, take a little bit of something and treat yourself. One thing that always stay in my mind every single time that I get paid, I hear my mother's voice saying, you better buy yourself something out of that check. You earned it. You worked hard for it. You treat yourself to something nice. And I absolutely do. I live by that. I always hear her saying that. I always treat myself to something. I don't care if it was a pen or a bottle of whiteout. It do, everything does not have to be so elaborate and exquisite all the time. When you can appreciate the little, God will supply all your needs with the small, from small, medium to large. You will be blessed beyond measures with greater. Be happy where you are. Be happy in the now. But you have to be happy with your inner being. You can't just get all dressed up on the outside, showing up and showing out and fronting. Real why the inside is tainted. Because your inside is where you need to work on that heart. You got to work on that heart. Having a clean heart is everything. This is how we go through our day. And this is how you're going to behave throughout your day. So make time for you. You're doing it with the kids. You're doing it for the husband. but And you're doing it for the employer. You're doing it for the church. It's all well and good. It's good. Everybody's getting a piece of you. But what about you? You're not getting anything out of it. You're just running around being burnt out, laying down, getting up, and doing it all over again. Some of us get up and we so fixated on what we already had planned from yesterday. We make these big plans and don't even know if God's going to wake you up to see the next day. But we got it all planned out. And then when we wake up, we forget to give him the thanks and all the praise. That was me at one point. I'm running, 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 and I'm giving him an on-the-go praise. That ain't cool. That's not cool. He deserves so much more. And I heard the Holy Spirit said to me, girlfriend, sit your behind down. How he sat me down? This right side of my hip. My lower back is causing problems in my hip bone. Yup. And so that's how he sat me down because I'm trying to get up out the bed and run to start my day. And the sister's like, wait, hold on. I got to do, I got to get up little by little. I got to stretch. I got to meditate. I have to thank God for my day and ask him to bless my day. I don't know if I'm going to accomplish everything today, but I got to start with him. So start with God and then get into you. Tell your kids and everybody else, pump the brakes, give me a minute, boundaries, kiss my boundaries, limitations. Get yourself free from everybody else, all the stuff that's churning in your brain. Your brain don't get no rest. You ain't getting no sleep. I don't think anybody gets eight hours of sleep anymore. Not in this world we live in. Because we're always busy. We always got something planned. We always have something to do. We're always, 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 always running and going. Pump the brakes and make time for you. Self-care is the best care. And with that being said, yes, I'm checking the time because the sister got to go to work um, early today. Praise God for the extra hours. Overtime is good. It's needed. Because I have trips planned that I got to pay for. I have a son graduating that I'm excited about. And I got to get him laced up and ready and slaying for the prom. I have a son that's going to college that me and his dad. And it's not just me. I'm saying I because I'm doing my encouraging text. But the dad is there. Thank you, Jesus. I have a good baby daddy um, that is there. So I'm not financially doing everything on my own, but physically I am. I'm doing all the running. I've been doing all the running and I raised them. So yes, I am. I have a lot going on and I'm going to go get this overtime. But in doing so, I had to take time out for my routine to take care of making sure that you all get some type of encouragement for today. So with that being said, as I always say, this is the day that the Lord has made. You will, you should be rejoicing in it. Have a blessed, 
already blessed day and know that Jesus loves you and so do I. God bless everybody. Stay cheerful. Stay jubilant. Later.